Folks, today I wanted to discuss who are the fighting game characters that no matter what game they end up in, they always seem to be top tier. Whether it's because they're the developer's favorites so they make them really good, or there's certain things in their tool set that are just inherently strong and really hard to make weak. Let's talk about it. Let's run through a list of the five characters that always seem to be top tier, and then let's analyze a little bit what is it about these characters that I think leads to them being really strong in game after game after game. So let's get into the list. Folks, before we get into it, I wanted to tell you about an upcoming fighting game called Diesel Legacy, who are also the sponsors for today's video. Diesel Legacy is a hand-drawn 2v2 fighting game that's four players on two teams. And in addition to that, there's also another unique mechanic in this game, which is lanes. There are three lanes that you can freely move between. And even after one player on the team is defeated, it's not over for them. You can assist your teammate, you can extend combos, and you can even parry attacks from beyond the grave. Diesel Legacy has 10 characters and each character has their own unique story mode. There's also a full featured training mode with all those features that players like me who love fighting games are always asking for in games. Stuff like hitbox viewer, frame data for your moves are in the game. It also has an advanced replay system where you can fast forward, rewind, and take over replays. If you're having trouble with a situation, you can take it over in the replay and figure out what you need to do to deal with it. And you can even do this with other people replays and not just your own and when it comes to online multiplayer not only does this game support four players simultaneously online which is kind of crazy for a fighting game uh, but of course it also has rollback netcode which we're always asking for it's in this game I feel like you can really tell that people who care about fighting games are behind this game because all these little things that were always like yeah can we get this in all the new fighting games please uh, definitely seem to be present in this one. And I'm also pleased to announce that Diesel Legacy will be free and playable for everyone starting right now. So there's a demo happening from the 10th to the 17th of June. Use the link in the description or find Diesel Legacy on the Steam Store to check out the demo and play the game right now. So I've been messing with the game myself. I'm trying to learn all the systems, the lane mechanic and everything, and it's been a ton of fun. And the 2D art is seriously so beautiful. So make sure you guys check it out for yourselves download the demo and be sure to wishlist the game on steam so you'll be ready for the final release so thank you guys for checking out the game and thank you so much to diesel legacy for supporting the channel okay so the first character i wanted to talk about probably to the surprise of no one is gonna be zero so zero made his debut in capcom fighting games here in tatsu noko versus capcom and he was very quickly identified to be one of the best if not the best characters in the game so things he has going for him first of all he has sword normals sword normals tend to be pretty good because if your character has extra reach that the rest of the cast is not going to have access to uh that's just going to make it a lot easier to win interactions and to pressure the opponent he also has the pizza cutter his jump H, which is just a nasty normal that can hit on front and back, and it's multiple hits. And one of his other really powerful tools is his teleport. So he can teleport down from the air quickly to create high-low mix-ups. Or since this is an assist-based fighting game, you can very easily create super ambiguous cross-ups by calling your assist and passing through them. So he ends up being one of the hardest characters to block. And he has the Buster Shot, which is a very high damage, high durability projectile that is going to go through most of the opponent's projectiles and it causes a knockdown state so you can get a combo afterward. Zero then returned in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and was once again identified as one of the strongest characters almost immediately. His Buster Shot was still really crazy and he has this new lightning dash move that enables him to do really crazy combos including the feared lightning loops which are pretty hard to execute but once you can do it you can kill characters very easily and he can mix up the enemy on incoming using lightning as well and be really really hard to block and defend against so in both original and ultimate marvel vs capcom 3 he was a top tier and he was an evo winning character uh, back in 2013 when Flocker beat Justin Wong. 
So top tier in Tatsunoko versus Capcom, Marvel versus Capcom 3, Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom 3, then in Marvel versus Capcom Infinite, he was also top tier. But what's really funny is even way back in SNK versus Capcom Chaos, made by SNK, not made by Capcom, Zero was still top tier. He had the sword normals, he had the pizza cutter, he had the chargeable buster shot, he even had an infinite. So uh, yeah, even when Capcom is not involved, somehow Zero always ends up top tier due to his ridiculous combination of tools, and he always just seems to have crazy combo ability as well. Next up, let's move into the realm of Street Fighter and talk about the girl herself. It's Chun-Li. Okay, so let's do a little inventory of the commonly played tournament Street Fighter games where Chun-Li is top tier. In Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, most people consider her somewhere around top five in the game. In Street Fighter Alpha 2, she's top tier, top two, top three, top one. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, of course, she's top one or top two in this game. Street Fighter 4... Okay, we might have escaped this one. She was just like mid, maybe upper mid, depending on the version. But she did have a good matchup against Elena, who was one of the strongest characters in the game. So she does see some play for that reason. Street Fighter V at launch, she was like the best character in the game. Uh, you know, she's moved around on the tier list. But at the end of the day, she ended up being very strong in kind of the final patch of this game. Even Street Fighter VI at launch, she was considered top five. She definitely got nerfed in the most recent patch, but she's still really... Really, really strong. So what is it about Chun-Li that always leads to her being top tier? I think to a degree, just the way she's designed, she's really good at the types of things that are good in Street Fighter, right? Street Fighter is usually designed to be a ground-based, you know, poking footsies type of game. And that's what Chun's really good at. She always has really fast walk speed, really long range normals. In the air, she's often floaty, but you know, they don't really want you to be jumping in Street Fighter anyway, for the most part. You know, that's why they put anti-air dragon punch and, and stuff in the game. So I think a character who is designed around really controlling the ground and being hard to contest with all of her good buttons, uh, it's just a play style that tends to be really important and really hard for certain characters to get in on. Next up, I want to go to Guilty Gear and let's talk about Nago Ryuki. So I know this might seem like cheating a little bit because uh, Nago Ryuki has only been in one game and that's Guilty Gear Strive, but we are now on our fourth year of Guilty Gear Strive, if you can believe it. And regardless of whatever patches come in, whatever Arc System Works tries to do to this guy, he really does seem to always end up top tier. Half the time, he's in the conversation for best character in the game, but he's usually up there in that top five territory. He's definitely a character with a big downside, which is, of course, his blood gauge. You know, the more special moves you use, the more you're filling up that blood gauge. And then when it fills up, you go into blood rage, which leaves you super punishable. You can die for accidentally going into blood rage. But his inherent benefit of the fact that he can cancel special moves into special moves is just so strong that they just seem to be unable to make him anything other than top tier no matter what kind of nerfs they try to throw his way. His blood gauge also comes with an upside, which is that the longer the gauge gets, the closer it is to full, the stronger his normals become. So he can become a very, very effective poking character with stuff like his 2S, his 5H. These moves become ridiculous when his blood gauge gets high. So that makes him even scarier because it's like, okay, he's taking advantage of his really powerful special moves. And then when the blood gauge starts to get full, he gets these really long normals as well. It feels like when you watch tournament streams for this game, you can't watch for more than a few minutes without seeing some Nago Ryuki's. His speed when he cancels his special moves, his range, his damage is out of control. All this combines to make him a really, really dominant character in the right hands despite some of the massive downsides that come along with having to manage the blood gauge. But I mean, guys, I mean, just in the clip we're watching, did you guys see that two touch? Oh my God, this character is cracked. All right, next up, let's talk Tekken. So, you know, I really wanted to find a Tekken character to put in this video, but it was a bit harder than I expected. It seems like there are a lot of Tekken characters where, like, they're really good in every version except, like, one or two games. They just weren't that good. So it was hard to find one who was consistently top tier across the board, but one that I thought would be really interesting to talk about. A few Tekken people who I asked about this pointed out to me 
Bob is kind of an interesting case here. So Bob really only appeared in three Tekken games. So the most recent was Tekken 7, where, you know, he was generally strong, but not like super overpowered. This was a very high power level game with a lot of the DLC characters and the 2D characters like Akuma as well were really, really strong and drove a lot of other characters into kind of just being good, but not broken enough. But prior to Tekken 7, Bob was really, really powerful. He is kind of like a, a faux Mishima in the sense that uh, he has a wave dash. You know, he has he has a, a hell sweep out of his wave dash. He has a one, one, two, so he has really amazing 10 frame punish. He also has a throw that he can combo off of, which is pretty great. But to go back in time to the game where Bob was the most dominant by far, it was Tekken 6. And in fact, in 2011, uh, there was a very notorious Evo top eight for Tekken 6, where out of top eight, half the players were playing Bob, four Bobs. And Grand Finals came down to a Bob versus Bob. So people called Bob the strongest Mishima in the game at the time, even above characters like Devil Jin. And uh, he was just a very uh, overplayed, overhated, uh, frustrating character just with how overall powerful he was and how few weaknesses it seemed like he had. And then Bob returned in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, where again, he was very strong, arguably top tier in this game with, again, his very safe options, his amazing punishes. And he even had a glitch that allowed him to do inescapable resets, you know, letting him reset damage scaling and apply massive damage during combos. So again, Bob was really, really good in this game. And then we kind of have the cross developer effect happening again here in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Some modern tier list put him somewhere around the top 10. He was very good. So I guess Capcom got the memo that Bob was meant to be good during this era. His agility, his mix-ups, his high damage uh, just made him a very potent character. So once again, I like to see when multiple developers are apparently conspiring to make the character good. Okay, maybe that's not the case, but I do think his Mishima game plan combined with his surprising agility for how large the character is end up making him pretty good in basically every game he appears in all right and then for the final character here i think this is probably the one that you guys expected the most we got to put in a little code to pick this guy we go to cami go to ryu start and then all three buttons and of course we get akuma so of course akuma is banned here in super street fighter 2 turbo the game that he first appeared in but in all the other games where he's not banned he pretty much always ends up somewhere in the top five and oftentimes he is the top one like seriously let me know in the comments are there any exceptions where akuma is not that good like even third strike he's like upper mid tier he's probably not top five but he's still really strong and uh, obviously, back here in Super Turbo, he's really broken. So one of the tools that I think he always has that always makes him so powerful is the air fireball. Having access to this unique way of controlling space that the other fireball characters don't have is just really good. Plus the fact that landing is going to cancel the recovery, meaning that it's going to have shorter recovery than ground fireballs will in a lot of situations. He also always tends to have the most damaging combos of all the Shotos because of his crazy links and because of his ability to combo off of his hurricane kick without spending any meter. He also has a teleport, which lets him get out of bad situations. Another tool that the other Shotos like Ryu and Ken don't have access to. He also has his trademark super, the raging demon, which is an unjump command grab again something that Ryu and Ken are not going to have access to it always does massive damage and it just gives him an extra mix-up that you have to be scared of that you don't really have to against a lot of other fireball characters so even here in Street Fighter 6 where he was very recently added to the game we don't really have that many tournament results for Akuma yet because he has not been in the game that long we haven't had that many major tournaments since he's come out but the opinion amongst a lot of players is he's seems extremely strong yes he does have the downside of having low health that's how they try to balance him in every game they just make him really overpowered but then they give him low health to kind of make him dangerous and inconsistent to play but that tends to not work that well with enough time i think players will figure out akuma and make him really ridiculous even in street fighter 6 
So let me know what you guys think. Do you agree with the list? Do you think there are any other characters that I forgot about that should be included if I ever do this again? I would love to hear it. And let me know your opinions on why these characters tend to always rise to the top. Let me know your theories. And with that, we're going to end the video. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.